the same people that where he's borrowing the money from are the same people that we've borrowed the money from. ADB, World Bank, uh, Australia. Those are the same people we borrowed, the Chinese Exim Bank. He's borrowing money from the same people. The same rates, same, same terms, 25 to 30 year loan repayments. Most of them are concessional rates, 1 to 2%. Those are the borrowings that we've done. But we've borrowed money to build infrastructure. Every loan that we got, I can name it to a project, name it to a road, name it to an airport, name it to a wharf, name it to a hospital, name it to something that I've built, physically built in the country. Now, 37 billion kina that Marape government has borrowed, what have they built? They've just spent and consumed and stole. All members of parliament must stand together and say no to the 2025 budget and absolutely uh, stop the budget from being passed. We can run a supply bill up until February so that we just get all these uh, in-house issues in order because everything the treasurer has been doing is illegal. He hasn't put the MAIFO out in time. He hasn't put a budget strategy paper. And we don't even know whether he's going to put a a final budget outcome. So these are real serious issues because you're talking about public money. It's the people's money. It's not his private business. But he continues to run the treasury like a tucker box, and it has to stop. The independence of the central bank is now highly compromised. Passing Blostilia now, you go to the level where country has our experience. All our institutions of government have gone silent. Okay, in 2018, our public debt stock was at 25 billion kina. So the Marape government has borrowed 37 billion kina in five years, which is doubled, more than doubled, the total amount of uh, debt that's been incurred since 1975. In 43 years since Somare, up until uh, the Honorable Peter O'Neill, since the Grand Chief Somare, in 43 years, our p- national debt was at, was at 25 billion. And since Marape became prime minister, he has not only doubled, he's increased his debt to 37 billion. And what has he got to show for it? What, what the government needs to do is uh, immediately uh, cut back on spending. Revenue collections are at record levels. That, mm. mean, that, that, that means that we are receiving money, collecting money higher than what we have budgeted for. But we're still borrowing money. Why are we doing that? So this um, basket of goods that they're using to calculate headline inflation, it's, uh, it's quite mm. deceptive because it doesn't accurately reflect what average Papua New Guineans are spending 100 kina on. So- when Somaria was in government, when I was in government, we've never dealt with that evil organization. The track record around the world is, 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 is known for destroying economies around the world. This Connect PNG program, uh, for all listeners, it's a get rich quick, uh, money, money, um, scheme, um, concocted by the Marape government, which we consider to be a sinkhole because there's no return on investment and it doesn't, it doesn't create an environment where everybody participates in the development of the country. There was no need for, uh, Prime Minister Marape to shut it down. It was just to satisfy his own ego because he said uh, Peter O'Neill did the Octedi deal and Octedi went smoothly. He can do better in Pogra, which he didn't do better. When you look at uh, the recent figures that were released uh, by the treasurer in the in the media, uh, media uh, economic and fiscal outlook, the Maifo uh, 2024, uh, he released, released uh, this, uh, this report five months late. This report was supposed to be released uh, at the end of June, July at the latest. And uh, these figures are, uh, are quite deceptive. Uh, they paint uh, an erroneous picture that uh, the, the country is all right. He's uh, predicted uh, an inflation rate, headline inflation of 3.5%. But this doesn't reflect the cost of living crisis that the people of Papua New Guinea are currently experiencing. If you look at uh, prices throughout uh, the country, whether it's in the city, on the peri-urban parts of, of, uh, of, of cities, in, in the rural districts, there's no regulation of prices. So ICCC isn't doing its, uh, its job, and then they fall under the purview of, of the, the, the Treasury. You look at uh, the National Statistics Office, NSO, they're not even doing their job. So this um, basket of goods that they're using to calculate headline inflation, it's, uh, it's quite mm. deceptive because it doesn't 
accurately reflect what average Papua New Guineans are spending 100k now on. So uh, there's a cost of living crisis. Uh, we've lost the purchasing power of the Kina. It's, it's eroded um, because of year on year inflation. And if you look at wages, wages haven't increased in, uh, with respect to inflation. So every, the, our minimum wage rate is still three Kina 50. It's been three Kina 50 for uh, the last decade. It hasn't, it hasn't increased. So this, this, all this talk about, uh, inflation, b- uh, being, being under control and at 3.5%, it doesn't paint, uh, a, a, a realistic picture about what's happening in the country. True. When you look at this, uh, crawl peg depreciation strategy that was imposed by the, uh, IMF and, uh, and, and, um, and praised uh, by the treasurer on the floor of parliament, uh, w- uh when we questioned him at the last parliament session, uh, about the depreciation of the Kina affecting, uh, business. Because we, we're still in an FX crisis yep. and we're still in an FX crisis. We're unable to, uh, the business are, are, are unable to get foreign exchange out to purchase, uh, goods from overseas. So if you go into the stores now, you look at the shelves, uh, there's, there's not replenished, uh, goods. We're, we're, we're dealing with fewer goods. There's fewer imports and this affects excise duty. This affects import duty. This affects GST. So tax revenue is lost as a, as a result of, uh, lack of imports. And you can't import without FX. And this FX crisis has been exacerbated because we haven't respected the independence of the central bank. The treasury, if, uh, the, the, the treasury department has imposed, um, on the central bank, they've eroded the independence of the central bank, they've compromised their independence, and they've usurped the functions of the central bank by trying to meddle in, in the way the, the central bank regulates interest rates and regulates monetary policy. The job of the government is, and the treasury is just to primarily focus on fiscal policy, government spending and taxes. You don't have, you don't, they can't go and impose on the central bank on what interest rates, uh, to, uh, apply to regulate, um, uh, monetary policy in the country. And that's what's happening. So there's a weakening of, uh, public institutions and there's no more important institution in the country than the Bank of Papua New Guinea. So this is a real concern. If they don't change this, we're going to be in, uh, some real big trouble. And you can see that with the protracted FX issues, uh, that the country is currently experiencing. And it's affected business and business investment. And there's a total loss of confidence uh, because of uh, this meddling with the central bank. I agree entirely with the shadow treasurer on, on, on his comments. And uh, I, I know that the data that uh, Treasury has released, the uh, MIFO, uh, the uh, outcome of the uh, first six months of uh, our budget cycle, is, um, as he said, five months late and it's out of date already. Because you're releasing in November. By law, you are supposed to release it in July, August. By law. So we've missed all this time to uh, adjust the budget going forward if, if we see that their budget is not performing well. That is why specifically this kind of uh, legislation is, is framed. Now, the data that they are collecting, uh, you know, it's by National Statistical Office, and they can't even do the census properly. So how are they collecting data to say that inflation is tracking on the assumptions of about 3.5% per annum? Now, we know that depreciation of the Kina is well above about, about 15%, well above 10% already because of the IMF restrictions. I've gone on record to say that IMF should be kicked out of this country. We don't need their money. When Somalia was in government, when I was in government, we've never dealt with that evil organization. The track record around the world is, 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 is known for destroying economies around the world. Now, their strategy is saying that let's depreciate the Kina. So Kina value must go down. So we are, because we are exporting more. What are we exporting? Our coffee production is down. Mm-hmm. Most of our agricultural production is down. Only thing that we are exporting is LNG. LNG now because we're getting good revenue because the go- prices have gone up. But, you know, prices will come down and they're starting to come down. They went past 100 US dollars. Now they are tracking at about 80 US dollars. It'll come down to less than 50 and then we will be have lower revenues coming through. So all these factors in consideration and particularly when Papua New Guinea is an import based company, a country where you have a lot of things that we consume every day for our living is imported. So that means we need currency to, and our Kina to import all this, uh, all this from, uh, from foreign suppliers. Now, when you depreciate the Kina, uh, that 
value of the depreciation passes on straight forward to those imports. So they add on to the price already that is already going up already. So as Senator Treasurer said, minimum wages have not gone up. Prices of goods are going up. And uh, as a result, you see the cost of living crisis that our people are facing is real. Many of them are having probably one meal a day. They're not having three meals a day. The kids are going to, to school hungry. And these are realities facing every ordinary Papua New Guinean family. So the government is turning a blind eye on it. Last year, they provided nothing to support these families. This year's budget, this coming year's budget, uh, they uh, will see the budget when it's been displayed, but I can guarantee you that there won't be much support in there because they are blind. They are not hearing the challenges and the problems that our families are facing. So I think that IMF's strategy is wrong. They are saying that when we export more, most foreign uh, currency will come into the country. That is not quite true. You know, we have had a policy whereby we have allowed mining companies and oil uh, oil companies, when we had a project agreements, we allowed them to park their money overseas. They only bring in enough to run their administrative cost in the country. All the money they're not bringing into the country. So how is IMF going to force them? This is by law and by agreements that we have signed. So this is a, just a false uh, uh, assumption that we are going to be okay by because there will be a massive influx of foreign currency coming into the country. It won't happen. Well, on Pogra, as you, as you know, uh, this mine was operating in, and already in production. There was no need for uh, Prime Minister Marape to shut it down. It was just to satisfy his own ego because he said uh, Peter O'Neill did the Octedi deal and Octedi went smoothly. He can do better in Pogra, which he didn't do better. What he did was to go and do a deal four or five years later with uh, Barrick, saying that uh, we are going to pay Barrick money to buy equity in there. Barrick is giving them a loan to buy 51% equity there. So you have to pay that equity back, that loan back to Barrick for over the next 10 years or so. So you are not going to receive any dividend or any income uh, from Pogora until the entire loan is paid off. Barrick put on the table, I think, some free carry for both Pogara landowners and for Anger Provincial. I don't have the details, but I'm told that they've had some free carries uh, given to them. Rather than just getting the free carry and, and, and getting an affordable rate of uh, investment into Pogara, they try to control it and they think that they can they can have a majority shareholding and they will have a control over it. Well, he has misfired. Rather than acknowledging that he has caused all the problems, Many of the law and order issues in, in Hanga, I believe, I believe, are related to because of lack of income going to the people who were working and employed as a result of the mine, of mine operation. That includes truck operators, contractors, mm. SME owners, buy sellers along the road, bus owners. Most of them have gone broke because progress is not opening, the income stream is shut down. So it has got a ripple effect right throughout the community up, up, up in, in that area. Now everybody's turning into law and order issues to try and find a way to survive. And, and I think, you know, uh, uh, pushing each other for uh, some of the tribal issues that has been buried for a long time is now starting to come to service. And uh, I hope that uh, they find a solution very soon. But going back to those major projects, Pogra shut down. We already had a Papua LNG agreement already signed by a government, mm -hmm. mandated government of our country. Marape come in and cancel it and try to renegotiate it. I can tell you today that Marape did not change one page or one word in that agreement after now four or five years. Not one word or one sentence or one page. Now, if we had started the project in 2019 when he took over government, now we will be in production. Yes, LNG yes. prices are good. We should be able to, when, when everybody was locked down in COVID, we will be able to get this massive 13 or 14 billion US dollar investment in the country. Unfortunately, we have missed out. Now I am told by reliable sources that uh, the most likely the construction might, big might, it might start in 2027. Uh, that is still in the air, and it's not been concluded yet. So I think uh, many of the big projects like Papua LNG, Pogara, Wafi, and now you look at Twinja, big massive announcement, but I can tell you uh, it's not going to happen. Uh, I'm told that uh, MRDC, who was trying to buy some equity into Twinja, does not have the cash flow to buy into Twinja. They're going to go and borrow more money. 
So we are we are piling up all this even uh, SOE debt, landowner debt, and every all the other debts that are piling up on top of the government's borrowing to fund the budget. Uh, you know, it's now well over you know, 65, 70 million. Kina, uh, reach close to 70 million billion, uh, uh, 70 billion Kina worth of debt in stock in, in our country. On top of that, you have to add the SOE debt that is now accumulating. I'm, I'm certain that, uh, we, we are in some numbers that is, uh, very, very concerning for the, for the people. So far, we have received no evidence, uh, no uh, res- proper re- response whatsoever. Uh, Prime Minister has, uh, committed on the floor of parliament that there was going to be some investigation. Uh, I have made very clearly that uh, hundreds of millions of kina uh, spent uh, and paid to contractors that are not uh, been been uh, re- getting the contracts by following proper uh, procurement process, and uh, this is public money, and there needs to be some level of accountability. We are we are not talking about uh, thousands of kina; we are talking about hundreds of millions of kina. Uh, I don't know that uh, there is any investigation going on. There's been no uh, information about uh, such an such an investigation. So, uh, as you can see, the prime minister has gone silent on this issue, as he does on many other issues, which which are which are uh, brought up by opposition and many other members of the public uh, that are left un- answered because uh, those are statements that are, of course, factual. We provide facts to those uh, facts. We provide a list of checks that have been. Paid, amounts that have been paid, but uh, so far no uh, no response. This Connect PNG program uh, for all listeners, it's a get rich quick uh, money money um, scheme um, concocted by the Marape government. If uh, people throughout the country uh, take stock of uh, the performance of this uh, uh, program and simply ask themselves throughout the ninety six districts, how many companies in these districts? Uh, part of the Connect PNG program. And you will soon find out that billions of Kina of the people's money, public funds, have been invested into this, uh, uh, you know, in, into the Connect PNG scam, which we consider to be a sinkhole because there's no return on investment and it doesn't, it doesn't create an environment where everybody participates in the development of the country. The contractors are known to uh, their, um, their political cronies of the current uh, regime, and that's why there isn't a fair distribution of contracts. The contracts aren't procured through proper processes, and this has received the bulk of the funding, whether we are talking about borrowed funds, whether we are talking about uh, appropriations, and even funding to districts and provinces have been redirected, which is also illegal, to fund Connect PNG uh, contractors' payments and contracts and to pay off what we call arrears. So in terms of blocking the budget, you will, you will uh, from in the post Korea on uh, page 21, I've released uh, an analysis of the MAIFO, and, and it captures that the government has failed in the first six months to effectively meet budget forecasts and expectations. So mm-hmm. there should have been an immediate supplementary budget right then and there to, to rescue uh, the budget and redirect uh, the, the, the spending. But this didn't happen, and the, the treasurer has been furtive, he has been uh, elusive, he has been hiding, and he hasn't been clear about the people's money. And this lack of accountability must raise concerns for Papua New Guineans and their elected representatives. So in terms of blocking the budget, it can be done if all the members of parliament see that they didn't receive all the DSIP, they didn't receive all their PSIP, that the, there's been a regression in health indicators, mm. you just have to go to our premier health insti- uh, uh, institution at Three Mile Pomgen. If, if we are having mothers give birth on the floor, then this tells you that money hasn't been spent appropriately as per the budget. So there's been some real serious issues. In the last uh, five years, this Marape government has borrowed 37 billion kina. Okay, in 2018, our public debt stock was at 25 billion kina. So the Marape government has borrowed 37 billion kina in five years, which is doubled, more than doubled, the total amount of uh, debt that's been incurred since 1975. In 43 years since Somare, up until uh, the Honorable Peter O'Neill, since the Grand Chief Somare, in 43 years, our p- national debt was at, was at 25 billion. And since Marape became Prime Minister, he has 
not only doubled, he's increased his debt to $37 billion, And what has he got to show for it? You know. So now we the 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 national debt is uh, he's borrowed thirty seven billion. So we're we're, we're the, according to my IFO, uh, our public debt stock will go over sixty two billion. The prime minister, uh, the former prime minister, has alluded that it's much higher than that because they've got off budget uh, uh, loans. They're giving sovereign guarantees to state owned enterprises. What's happening with uh, New Guinea right now? What's happening with all this other development? These are sovereign guarantees. Where you're saying that the government's going to take care of this, take a loan. Goodness. So this this is probably uh, in in real terms taken our debt stock to over a hundred billion. We are now tracking a debt to GDP level at fifty two percent, and this is just a heavy debt burden that's going to affect the way we're able to repay debt, and then the way we're able to sustain other uh, investments in our people, manage health, law and order, and education. So this is real serious, and all members of parliament have to wake up. And see that what's been happening here with respect to how the budget's been implemented, it's been a flop. And we can't allow this, this failed budget uh, trend to continue. From the uh, opposition, we've uh, called uh, the treasurer out for providing a late uh, Maifo. Um, he hasn't provided a budget strategy paper to inform the public about uh, what the plan is to address these issues that you've just uh, mentioned. Um, from uh, basically from the analysis that uh, I've also provided, uh, which is in the Post Korea on page 21, it's a full page ad. What what the government needs to do is uh, immediately uh, cut back on spending. Um, you you you'll see that uh, the, they'll need to cut back on spending. We'll we'll have to take uh, certain austerity measures. Mm-hmm. Um, we we have to look at some of these programs that haven't provided a return on investment, haven't improved our productive capacity. Um, like Connect PNG, uh, when you're talking about just a small group of people being employed, we have to target our youth. We have to deal with our land. We have to deal with our forests. We have to deal with our maritime resources. We have to come back to agriculture. Uh, that's where the biggest uh, bulk of the population is, and that's where we can have bang for the buck. We can have the biggest impact in uh, targeted investments. This is how we can directly increase exports. So it's a win-win situation, and this will require strong uh, leadership, strong follow-through to get the country back on track by mobilizing our youth. And we have a youth bulge crisis in the country where the largest demographic of the population right now is young men and women with no prospects, no opportunity, and it's a ticking time bomb if it's not addressed. Uh, we also strongly urge the, uh, the government to really focus on equ- equitable distribution, which was a tenet of the Constitution in, in the preamble. Um, this has just been forgotten uh, in, in the previous budgets where we, we've, we've weaponized the budget, we, we're playing politics, and we're forgetting that in the opposition, you can, you can uh, try to be um, oppressive against us, but you're affecting our people. You know, we can agree to disagree on policy. That's why we're here as mandated leaders. But uh, failure to implement the budget equitably throughout the country, as per the budget, uh, this really affects our people and the services that they receive. So we want to see equitable distribution. And the biggest way that the government can do this is to really grab the bull by its horn, to stop this lip service, and then promote provincial autonomy. And then ensure that you finance each of the provinces through block grants, and then you decentralize. So that means that we have to right-size the public service at Waigani, and we have to go back. So we have to look at national development through a province-by-province approach, Mm -hmm. because every province is different. Some provinces are focused on coffee. Some have forest uh, resource, maritime resources. Uh, Some have uh, uh, fisheries. This is how you've got to, like, you know, uh, uh, approach the budget formulation with uh, that acuity to just understand that we have to embrace this diversity in the provinces and allow them to drive their own development. Yes. Some have mineral resources like Enga. It's got Pogora. Uh, Kainantu has a, a Kainantu mine. Some don't. So you've got to tr- you can't treat them all the same. One, one, one hat doesn't fit, fit all. When we approach, uh, approach uh, development and budget formulation um, with this appreciation that every province has its own potential and then you effectively leverage – then you'll see that the country will just uh, be on a different development trajectory. And this requires a strong vision and strong leadership. And we also expect the Prime Minister to uh, stop worrying about his political survival. Uh, He's got to just downsize the the cabinet 
It's it's thirty three. It's obese. It's just thirty eight. It's uh, it's just obese. It's too big. He's got to take it down to twenty three. He's got to get rid of all these vice ministers, and we've got to get to work uh, for the people of Papua New Guinea. We've got to stop worrying about political survival and allow the constitution to reign supreme, and allow uh, parliament to be respected. So th- these are some of the things that we want to see in uh, in uh, in uh, in this budget and we've also already presented it in our 14 point plan and the opposition's policy so we expect fiscal consolidation we expect them to restructure like the debt that we're getting we expect them to get rid of IMF so that we're not when we're not enslaved to their um onerous policies it's just pernicious their presence in the country it's not good for the country we don't need anybody here we've got enough resources the the problem is just how we're spending the money this is the problem it's not that we don't have enough money. It's how we're spending the money. And if you look at this appetite for borrowing, $37 billion, it's unprecedented. And when you ask yourself, do we have world-class health facilities? Have we, have we done anything to address the, the education attrition rates, the grade 8 school leavers, the grade 10 school leavers? And the answer is no. So we've got to get smarter about how we're spending the money and how we're driving government programs. And if ministers aren't performing, you've got to sack them. We failed in the census. Who was responsible? Sack him. This is the level of accountability that has to come in, and it starts with the Prime Minister. In supporting uh, what um, uh, the Shadow Treasurer is saying, mm. that revenue and revenue collections are at record levels. That, mm. mean, that, that, that means that we are receiving money, collecting money higher than what we have budgeted for. But we're still borrowing money. Why are we doing that? We are doing that because we are overspending. While we are collecting, collecting record amount of taxes, we are also spending, the government is spending more money than what they are collecting. So this over-expenditure, now I am told by uh, people in finance and other that there's over 800 million kina worth of checks that are already issued and given to uh, people around you know, political favors and all these things. 800 million, 800 kina, million kina. kina worth of checks floating around. That's almost a billion kina. Almost a billion kina floating to be presented to the bank because there's not enough money to clear them. They're all in Tasona. Every time uh, go to check him, the bank, the bank balance. Goodness. This is what is happening. Now, today you have a government of the day, a government in any country restricting expenditure down to 50,000 kina before one secretary must approve him this law, mm. secretary for finance. The secular just went out. How can you run a government like that, where you have got big contracts and big expenditures and so forth? So they are not managing the budget well. Next year, my guess is that the biggest expenditure that the budget will have will be loan repayments. The loan repayments for the loans that we are borrowing. That will exceed our health budget. That will exceed our education budget. That will exceed our law and order budget. Our biggest budget payment, single line, will be loan repayment, which will be over close to four billion kina out of the entire budget. We're going to repay loan in every year. This is the danger of borrowing too much money and investing in uneconomical projects. See, when you borrow money, you have to invest in infrastructure that is going to grow the economy: roads, airports, uh, wharfs, and ports, and, and, and so forth. Mm-hmm. Those are enablers of, that will build your economy. They will bring revenue in there that will be able to repay those loans off. Yeah, no God, you may borrow money like I get so. I get us all now. Buy more some black kind can contract. You must have a good land. Only give them family and a cronies and all this like kind of something. Passing to Australia now, you go to a level where the country is now experiencing. All our institutions of government have gone silent. Everyone has gone silent. Why? Because they are all highly compromised. There's no level of accountability anymore, from Auditor General to Ombudsman Commission to the police to even ICAG has not been funded well, so they're not performing. Now it is creeping into the judiciary. Close to both side through by worry low country blow you me. Am no one blah private something blow versus in Tasol. We are here highlighting all these issues and we are expecting lively debates around the country. When somebody is doing something wrong, you have to say it. You are doing that person a favor too. You know, you're talking about Muslim. Yeah, you're wrong here. You must start him passing blue you now. Time law, you correct him you yet. So the country can benefit from that good law passing you walking land. 
And when we are telling uh, Marape government and Marape that he is making wrong decisions, he thinks that oh, we are playing politics and criticizing him. No, we are telling him that this is going on and you are encouraging it. Stop it and change direction. Cut costs. He has to get rid of this so-called uh, Connect PNG program in 2025 budget. He has to stop it. There's no economic value. Yes, we need to build some of the roads to the rural communities, but let the districts do it. You already given them the funding. Make sure they get funding properly. Suppose you give them three million tassel or favorite blue, you give them twenty million, thirty million kina. And one kind of passing. People in Yalubu Pangi are, are citizens of this country. Mm. People of Chuave are citizens of this country. They deserve services like anybody else. Why should they be victimized because of uh, uh, Peter O'Neill work like a big blood noise now? Out of the sin blood, me plus, or what me blend on a blood feeding more line blend. This kind of mentality needs to change because, you know, criticism is very healthy. You need to uh, embrace it and say, okay, this is the right criticism. I accept it. Uh, I'm wrong one, so I'm making reject him. But, you know, you make that assessment as you go along. The other thing that uh, the government has done recently is two very concerning things. In 2019, government, governments normally run an overdraft. They call it uh, TEF. In, 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 uh, there's a te- uh, the, that, uh, temporary advance like a facility, facility in, mm. it, with the central bank. In 2019, we had 200 million kina overdraft facility down there. It's like an overdraft facility. This year, they've increased it to 2 billion kina. 2, two, billion. two billion kina. From 200 to 2 billion. Now, that's like two billion and we'll use in Now, only sort of money yet. Goodness. Two billion kina. Whether they can legally do that or not, I don't know, but I think our good government lawyers can advise that. Because I think, you know, when you borrow that kind of money, you need parliament's approval. But Ms. Awe also, cabinet, he approved him two billion kina. Now, only use him, that's like two billion kina, also overdraft pennies. So, they've recently now, central bank, only the independence of the central bank is now comprom- highly compromised. Most appointees are all political appointees. So there's no independence of the central bank anymore. Only recently, I think uh, uh, last week or a week before that, central bank issued a uh, instruction that all the superannuation funds, that's all you workers in the country, hear this properly, all you workers in the country, that you have no right to invest in overseas investments, your investment manager or your board or your uh, management team cannot look for those investments and invest overseas. They've blocked that now, you know. Why did they do that? Really? So... Yeah, there's an instruction already. It's public already. So, so they, they can't invest overseas, despite the fact that we we would definitely daily need Forex right now. Bef- before, they were, they, they were allowed up to, I think, 33 or 35, uh-huh. 35% of the portfolio they can invest, invest overseas. in overseas where there's good investments. But now there's a restriction and they've stopped that. Why? Because every time they go to try and borrow money to issue treasury bills, what we call government and the sort of money is issuing treasury bills, sort them uh, treasury bills for 12 months or so down at the central bank. And they have to do an auction every week. So over the last few months, I think three or four months now, every time they do an auction, no man like buying this la or uh, paper, yeah? And treasury bills and promise law, all about talk all time. You blah giving me blah 350 million kina or 100 million kina, but me blah buying you this like interest over the next 12 months. So there's been under subscription of those treasury bills. So what will happen is now the super funds who are already overexposed on treasury bills, overexposed, meaning only reaching limit blow law, that's like scale where only in a blah buying treasury bills. Now they're trying to force them to buy treasury bills because they will have a lot of cash which they can't invest in any other investments. So the risk is that when the government is unable to pay those treasury bills back, uh, you will lose that money. So this is uh, something that the workers throughout the country needs to be concerned about. Mm -hmm. This is your retirement money sitting in there that uh, now the government is trying to play games with. And I think it's because... Only approximately there's like two billion kina or some overdraft facility only got one time central bank. Now, under subscription of the treasury bills, my assumption is that they're trying to force. Because who, said, who else has got uh, a large savings that they can buy treasury bills? Only super funds. 
And this is what it's coming to, the, the desperation of a government looking for money everywhere. The cash flow crisis, yeah. The cash flow crisis that is happening. You go beg IMF, beg ADB, beg Australian government. You mean walk around now, carry this little begging ball, blow me around talk, please. I mean, me blow loan about now, give me blood advance money and a supporting budget and this kind of something. And me bugger, I mean, carry me tribal semi gamble country, blame me. Tribal semi gamble country, blame me. We have never, Somara has never asked, I have never asked Australian government to support our budget over the, over the 18 or 19 years that we were in government. Now, close to, close to, Teresa blame me, walk low, go low, can bray it. I didn't have much got one blouse looking, bro, too. Miss Charles, I'm going to go close to, close to, so I must got one blouse, and I'm going to go tumble. I'm going to ask him, Terrestri, Australia, and over the line, like, give him money close to, close to them. Uh, and this is kind of person must stop. We are talking about the pride of our nation, you know. We must have some pride in ourselves. I beg him, ask him a good question. Uh, time, uh, government, I'm stopping uh, DSIP, Golo District, and uh, I'm broken law. Because in the inside law budget, uh, money blood district and money blood district and commander need law appropriations act. So um, it's passed on uh, parliament and give talk right now. All put them go inside the law. Mm -hmm. So this law M M law treasury law just law law be him that's all not making payment. Time uh, treasury you no know, making payment. All cross law member M stop law position. All talk all some oh, M M not gonna see money blog and M M talk talk to us or M big at to us. I'm not support him government. M at him you me to us. Um, treasury um, uh, um, 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 Brookham law. And that law, um, Brookham law, um, uh, um, can, um, can go to some la heavy law, this law. So, um, some la something where me are looking inside the opposition, um, plenty money blow opposition, um, government, um, um, xim, na, um, redirect him, um, um, karim, this la money blow opposition, where em um, bagolo DSIP blow, uh, Swawe or Yalibu Pangea or Nalblo member blow opposition, na, um, karim gonna, um, put him go to Nalblo program. Uh, and I need law criminal code, this law I'm calling misappropriation, where you use public money, now you know spend him law, ask Tintin law money, but you spend him law again. So this last Tintin, I'm come up law budget. So yes, I'm illegal, now time treasurer, I make him slack and something, come underneath law what, uh, you may have been talked to plenty time, law selective warranting, where all looks our law, who stop at the mall, now all support him, law, law budget money, now money stop inside law, law, law government. Uh, this law am crangi na am brukim law law blo country. For the cuts, um, the definitely in terms of like you know the Connect PNG program, mm -hmm. uh, it, it has to be completely uh, cut out. Uh, there has to be smarter funding to the districts and provinces. Uh, it's it's also quite excessive now, and there's just too much miscellaneous spending, uh, and uh, the amount of money that's parked into payment of arrears. Um, uh, where they're saying that um, there's outstanding commitments or obligations by the government. If you start slashing uh, the, the payments in arrears, if you uh, stop Connect PNG, and if you uh, reduce the size of the budget to uh, look at targeted investments, you will see that uh, we can effectively bring the budget down uh, in excess of 5 billion kina. Um, because we're already uh, uh, achieving... Um, uh, revenues that are above uh, uh, forecast, it's just about how we're spending this money uh, effectively. We've uh, borrowed so much money predicated on extractive industry projects, and look at what's happened. They haven't got off the ground. We haven't received any foreign direct investment since 2019, and now look at what's happening to Pogara, our only operating mine. It's just in absolute shambles with the law and order crisis. So we have to be smart about what's uh, our, our spending in the budget um, and, uh, and cut down on, on these areas that I've, 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 I've highlighted. And the biggest thing, Culligan, for, 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 for all the listeners to appreciate is, um, we are not uh, tracking uh, and performing above and beyond budget expectations because of uh, perception and expectation. When consumers expect that inflation will be high, they stop spending money. When business expect that uh, inflation will be high, they also reduce uh, spending. This affects inflation and it, it, it becomes a self-fulfilling pro uh, pro prophecy. When governments and bilateral partners, they don't, they don't have confidence in the leadership of uh, James Marapa as the prime minister and Ian Linkstaki as the treasurer and the government itself, they won't come to our aid and they won't come to assist uh, to promote our development agenda in the country. So our failure to manage perception and expectations of stakeholders, and the most important stakeholder being the people of Papua New Guinea, has completely affected overall uh, budget implementation performance. So in a nutshell, the 2024 budget has miserably failed, 
And uh, it's all completely highlighted on uh, page 21 of uh, the Post Korea. And all members of parliament must stand together and say no to the 2025 budget and absolutely uh, stop the budget from being passed. We can run a supply bill up until February so that we just get all these uh, in-house issues in order because everything the treasurer has been doing is illegal. He hasn't put the MAIFO out on time. He hasn't put a budget strategy paper. And we don't even know whether he's going to put a a final budget outcome. So these are real serious issues because you're talking about public money. It's the people's money. It's not his private business. But he continues to run the Treasury like a tucker box, and it has to stop. Uh, Because uh, the same people that where he's borrowing the money from are the same people that we've borrowed the money from. ADB, World Bank, uh, Australia. Australia. Those are the same people we borrowed at the Chinese Exim Bank. He's borrowing money from the same people. The same rates, same, same terms, 25 to 30 year loan repayments. Most of them are concessional rates, 1 to 2%. Those are the borrowings that we've done. But we've borrowed money to build infrastructure. Every loan that we got, I can name it to a project, name it to a road, name it to an airport, name it to a wharf, name it to a hospital, name it to something that I've built physically built in the country. Now, 37 billion kina that Marape government has borrowed, what have they built? They've just spent and consumed and stole. That's precisely what has happened. Now, they can say that, oh, you know, we we received... You know, one of his uh, favorite faces that uh, 2018, uh, the economy was in recession. Economy declined by point, minus 0.03%. Because of the commodity global prices came down in 2018. They collapsed. The commodity prices collapsed. As a result of that, our revenues collapsed. So our GDP declined by 0.03%. But the previous 18 years, from Somare 2002 to 2017, it has been consistent growth all the way. When I took over government from Somare in 2011, the GDP of the country was 40 billion kina. 40 billion. I doubled it in eight years to 80 plus billion kina. The economy was performing at an average of 7, 7% or above growth over that eight years. So if they want to talk on records, those are the records that stand. Those are the records that every public community that knows from Central Bank to IMF to World Bank and everyone else. So this so called budget repair, what repair are they doing? Yeah. They're not cutting expenditure. They're not getting any new revenue. They're not investing in any new infrastructure. They're not investing in creating a safe society by investing in law and order. All these services are declined. Health has declined. Education has declined. Law and order has declined. We're all living in fear in our own houses. Nobody has been arrested with all these murders that are going on in Tari and in Nenga. No one single person has been arrested for murder. Hundreds of people dying. For goodness sake, when is this country going to wake up that your leaders are lying to you? Because one leader holds a Bible and says, I'm holy, doesn't mean that he's doing the right thing. The country is going to the dogs. It's about time Papua New Guineans wake up. You and I will die tomorrow, but our kids will live on to see what the damage you have done. Thank you. 